Hey, so what if we were around and Jesus turned this whole baptistry into wine? That'd been really cool to see, right? What if we were there? Like, what if we were one of the people at this celebration in John chapter two at the wedding where we knew how important it was to have good wine and we ran out and maybe Jesus' mother heard us uh, and she came to us and said, hey, I've got a solution to the problem. Let me help you. And man, she went to Jesus and said, man, Jesus, they're about to run out of wine. They need help. And so Jesus was like, woman, why are you getting me involved in this? This isn't, this isn't my business. But apparently he saw it right to turn the water into wine and thus performing his first miracle. Man, people couldn't believe it. It was crazy. They didn't know what to think um, because the best wine had been saved for last. Normally you'd bring out the good wine at the beginning and once people had had their fill, then you bring out the not so good wine because that was cheaper. And, and yet, man, Jesus brought out the best wine later on. And of course, we can look at this and we see this is uh, Jesus' first miracle. And we can look into this and know that, uh, you know, what people had been doing to sacrifice for their sins and atone for their sins was really difficult. And the best was coming. Jesus was going to die and be resurrected. And he was saving the best for last. But I want to ask you guys a question. Is there an area in your life where maybe you're not saving the best for last? Uh, maybe, you know, when you first got into your marriage, you were a better husband or better wife than you are now. Or maybe when you first became a parent, then you were more committed, you were more intentional, you spent more time with your kids than you are now. Or maybe when you started that new job, you did, man, you did a fantastic, excellent job when you first started, but now you're just kind of, kind of over it, right? And you're not saving the best for last. We tend to become some lesser version of ourselves, knowing that we should do better. And so I want to challenge you on that today as you read through the first part of John chapter 2 and you're reading about Jesus' first miracle, about turning the water into wine, saving the best for last. Man, look into your life and ask yourself a hard question. Man, am I better now? than I was, because that's the challenge. That's the, the thing, because through Jesus Christ, through the work of the Holy Spirit, through his leading, you can be better now than you were when you started. And that's my challenge for you today. What area of your life are you not where you should be, where you're worse off now or where you're less now than you were then. And so I want to challenge you to get back up to where you should be. And then listen, John chapter two in our 21 day reading challenge, the second part of it is fantastic as well. This is a part where we get to talk about Jesus flipping the tables in the temple, right? What if we were there when Jesus came through and flipped a table? Did you know that he fashioned a whip as well? And, and listen, most of us like to think that Jesus fashioned a whip to run the people out. What had happened was, is they had turned the uh, the temple into a marketplace. They were taking advantage of people and they were gouging prices. Money had to be exchanged and people were getting taken advantage of. And Jesus was like, no, that's not what the temple is about. You've turned my father's house. You've turned this temple, a place of repentance, a place to uh, to come to atone for your sins, a place of worship. You've turned it into a marketplace. And so Jesus fashioned a whip and basically made a small stampede of animals and ran them out of the temple. And so after he did that, some of the men there were like, "What man, show us a miracle, Jesus. Show us a miracle. Let us know that you have the authority to come in and run these people out. And Jesus said, how about this? You destroy this temple and I'll rebuild it in three days. And of course, we know that Jesus died and on the third day rose from the grave. And that's what he's referencing. The, the temple that's important is the Messiah, Jesus Christ in John chapter two. And so we can see that we know that. And so, man, I want, I want to challenge you. Are there times where you're asking Jesus, like, Jesus, I know who you say you are in scripture. I know who my pastor says you are when he teaches. Um, I know, um, what I sing when I worship, but man, I just need a miracle to believe that you are who you say you are. And so, Man, that's okay to process that from time to time, but I want to challenge you. Man, get back to a place where you trust the Bible, where you study your word and you know that what it says is truth. You know that Jesus is who he said he is and you know that he's going to do what he said he's going to do. And man, he's going to love us through all this struggle. He's going to love us through anything that we can come into contact with. We don't have to sacrifice animals anymore. We just have to cry out to the Father and just say, Father, forgive me. Help me change. Help me turn to repent, to turn 180 degrees from who I was and help me to be different. God, I don't want to be a temple um 
that is looking to do things that benefit only me, just like those money changers were doing. They weren't really concerned with what was happening in the temple other than a way for them to make money. But man, that will pray, God, I know that I am the temple. I know that the Holy Spirit dwells within me and I want to be honorable. I want to be uh, a walking, living, breathing, uh, worshiping, praying, believing uh person. And uh, man, so I want to challenge you to do that. So identify in the first part of chapter two, identify what, what area of your life you're in where you maybe have gotten a little bit lazy or a little complacent and you need to get better. But then also, man, I want to challenge you guys like in the second part of John chapter two, to just step up and believe what scripture says, to act on what scripture says, and just be a walking, living temple uh, for Jesus Christ. Love you guys. Stick with the 21 day challenge. We'll talk to you tomorrow.